Al-Gindi, born in 801 and died in 873. Some disciplines, such as mathematics and biology, are more precise and better defined than other subjects like philosophy. Both the mathematician and biologist are on the whole, are agreed on what it is that they seek to study and explore. But that is far from being the case with the philosophers. The very definition of philosophy is controversial, and the diversity of views and controversies which once existed within philosophical circles persists to this very day. Generally defined as the love of wisdom, being derived from the Greek word philos, a friend, and sophos, wise. Philosophy was therefore considered to be the preoccupation of wise friends. The ancient Greek philosophers such as Socrates, Plato, Aristotle became great champions of philosophical thinking, but they did not pursue philosophy in a unified way. Their seminal contribution to philosophical thought remained in the doldrums of hundreds of years until the sun finally shone on Arabia in the 7th century. Rescued from being a footnote in history by the Prophet Muhammad, the Arabs embraced learning, culture, civilization like never before. The early Muslim scholars and philosophers not only translated original Greek philosophical works into Arabic, they also wrote extensive commentaries on them thus refining the ideas and thoughts of the ancient Greek philosophers, and in so doing, they paved the way for the emergence of falsafa, or Islamic philosophy. We well, don't just call it philosophy, it's the same thing anyway. It was Al-Gindi, that hugely influential Islamic philosopher, known in the West as the philosopher of the Arabs, Philosoph al-Arab who played a central role in the development of philosophical thought in the Muslim world. Abu Yusuf Yaqub ibn Ishaq al-Kindi, known in the Latin West as al-Kindus, was born in the Iraqi city of Kufa, hailing from the South Arabian tribe of Kinda. His grandfather, al shaath ibn Qais, claimed to be a companion of the Prophet Muhammad. His father, Ishaq ibn al-Sabah, was a respected member of the Abbasid political administration and served as governor of Kufa during the reign of the Abbasid Khalif al-Mahdi, al-Hadi and Harun al-Rashid, along with Basra, Baghdad, Damascus, Mecca and Medina. Kufa was one of the foremost centres of Islamic learning at the time. Brought up in a prosperous, wealthy and learned family, Al-Gindi attended his local school. He studied Arabic language, grammar, literature and traditional Islamic sciences during his early years before specialising in Islamic theology, mathematics, astronomy and philosophy. As a gifted student, he excelled in his studies and was to assimilate both the religious and philosophical sciences of his day with ease. After completing his formal education in Kufa, Al-Gindi moved to Baghdad, the political capital of the Islamic world, and pursued advanced training in the religious and philosophical sciences. After the death of Harun Rashid in 809, his son al Ma'mun, having defeated Al-Amin, became the Khalif and vigorously promoted the study of the rational sciences, including Greek philosophy and science, across the Muslim world. This created an intellectually friendly ambience for Muslim scientists and philosophers to conduct their research and inquiry into scientific philosophical and religious subjects. In Baghdad, Al-Kindi enjoyed the patronage of Khalif al-Ma'mun, who encouraged him to pursue his studies at the Bayt al-Hikmah, the House of Wisdom. The celebrated library and research centre originally founded by Harun al-Rashid, where some of the leading Muslim philosophers and scientists of the day pursued their research into their chosen area of specialisation. At the Bayt al-Hikmah, Al-Kindi devoted all his time and energy to the study of mathematics, astronomy, chemistry, musical theory and philosophy. During this period, he earned his livelihood working as a calligrapher at the Khalifal court in Baghdad. Along with other luminaries of the time, including Al-Khwarizmi, the great mathematician and scientist, and Al-Faraghni, the renowned astronomer, Al-Kindi became a prominent member of the Bayt al-Hikmah, Together they transformed this institute into one of the most famous centres of academic study and research in the Muslim world at the time. 
though some of the theological and philosophical views of these intellectuals were considered to be controversial by the traditionalist scholars such as Ahmad ibn Hanbal. Khalif al-Ma'mun gave them his full support and encouraged them to continue their intellectual activities. Given al-Kindi's intellectual brilliance and great linguistic abilities, Khalif al-Ma'mun became very fond of him and asked him to spearhead his pioneering task of translating Greek, Persian and Indian philosophical, mathematical and scientific works into Arabic for the benefit of the Muslim scholars and researchers. Being an accomplished linguist and an expert in ancient Indian, Greek and Persian philosophy and thought, Al-Kindi was appointed head of the team to, of dedicated scholars who conducted extensive research into comparative thought. They also translated and edited a large quantity of ancient philosophical and scientific literature into Arabic for the very first time. Thanks to Al-Kindi and his colleagues, the study of comparative thought became one of the foremost intellectual preoccupations of the early Muslim philosophers and scientists. As one of Khalif al Ma'mun's favourite intellectuals, he not only translated philosophical and scientific works from ancient languages and undertook research in almost all the branches of learning known during his time, but was also later chosen by Khalif al Mutassim Billah to teach and guide his son. Held in very high esteem by the new Khalif for his invaluable contribution to learning and research, Al Kindi was appointed chief astrologer at the Khalifal court in Baghdad when he was only 32 years old. Blessed with a powerful memory and encyclopedic mind, he excelled in a wide range of subjects including mathematics, astronomy, physics, chemistry, astrology, music, optics, geography, religious sciences, comparative thought and literature. However, it was in the field of optics, music and philosophy that he made some of his most original contributions. For the very first time in the history of optics, Al-Gindi fully explained the principle of rectilinear progress of light emerging from luminous object. As one of the most fundamental principles of optics, this is common knowledge today. But back in the 9th century, it was considered to be one of the most remarkable discoveries ever made in this field, especially because he was able to prove this theory by conducting experiments. Using a lit candle, Hence becoming known as the candle experiment, Al-Kindi was able to demonstrate that light progressed in a straight line. In addition to this, his books on geometrical and physiological optics were so accurate and advanced for the time that they subsequently became standard work of reference in optics sciences, both in the East and the West. His contribution in the field of musical theory was equally remarkable. Widely considered to be one of the greatest musical theorists of history, he penned seven books and treaties on the subject. According to the historians, he was one of the first to write on music and musical theory, and as such, should be considered the father of this branch of learning. In his writings, Al-Kindi explained in considerable detail the meaning and significance of rhythm, especially focusing on its role in classical Arab music. Since musical songs formed an important part of Arab culture, he was keen to develop a theoretical understanding of music, a branch of learning which the Muslims later exported to the West. Without Al-Gindi's original contribution in this field, the world of music would certainly have been much poorer in his understanding and appreciation of the ascetic's dimension of music. Though Al-Gindi's contribution in optics and musical theory were nothing short of remarkable, Today, he is most famous for his philosophical originality and writings. The author of 22 books on philosophy, he became a towering figure in the subject both in the Muslim world and in the West, where he became widely known as a philosopher of the Arabs, as a result of his considerable influence on Western philosophers and thinkers. In his famous Fil al philosopha al ulla The First Philosophy, he defined philosophy as the knowledge of the nature of things insofar as this is possible for man. The aim of the philosopher is as regard his knowledge to attain the truth and as regard his actions to act truthfully. To Al-Kindi, philosophy consisted of three parts, ranked in order of importance, the theological aspects of it, the mathematical aspects of it and the physical aspect of it. By 
elevating the theology to the highest point on philosophical discourse, he incurred the wrath of the traditional religious scholars, who argued that rational thinking on matters of religious belief was nothing short of heresy. Al-Kindi, however, disagreed with the traditionalists. He was far from being a heretic, as some claimed. Indeed, he remained a sincere, committed Muslim who practiced traditional Islamic teachings, both in public and in private. However, unlike the traditionalists, his adherence to Islam did not prevent him from learning and championing ancient Greek philosophical thoughts, and he frequently expressed his profound admiration for Plato and Aristotle, being the first and only great Arab philosopher to do so. But he did not compromise his Islamic faith and belief in this process. He remained a devout Muslim all his life. The traditional religious scholars of his time considered religion and philosophy to be incompatible, but Al-Gindi profoundly disagreed with this view. He considered religion and philosophy to be compatible in the same way that reason and revelation are harmonious. In his philosophical works, he thoroughly analysed and dissected Greek philosophical thought from an Islamic perspective in order to reconcile classic Greek philosophy especially Neoplatonism and Aristotelian thought, with a Quranic worldview. His attempts to harmonise the two perspectives proved so successful that it paved the way for the emergence of a separate Islamic philosophical tradition. As a philosopher, Al-Kindi did not discover or introduce a new principle in philosophical thinking. Rather, his originality lay in the fact that he was able to survey the Greek philosophical tradition through the philosophical lens of Islam. In his definition of philosophy, Al-Kindi identified two components which form the foundation of his philosophical discourse. True knowledge and true action. The correlation between knowledge and action was highly significant for Al-Kindi because philosophy and the practical ethics of Islam were, in his opinion, interconnected both at a theoretical level and in the daily affairs of the Muslims. According to Al-Kindi, philosophy relates to the nature of God, divine attributes, creation and time. Since the classical Greek philosophers, particularly the Aristotelian conception of God as the unmoved mover of all, was so similar to the Islamic concept of divinity, the Quran says God is one who created everything ex nihilo. Al-Kindi had no problem in accepting the Greek view on this matter. But unlike many other great Muslim philosophers, such as Ibn Sina, he believed that creation was not eternal. Rather, he considered time, space, and the chain of causality to be finite. Only God was infinite, he argued, because he was a first cause which was not an effect. He also insisted that the human body would be resurrected in accordance with Islamic teachings, and he was a firm believer in universal divine providence. He was quick to point out that perfect order and harmony in creation was a further indication of the existence of God. Although Al-Ghazali later thoroughly discredited the teleological argument for the existence of God. Nevertheless, Al-Kindi's translations, extensive commentaries and his synthesis of Islamic thought with the Greek worldview opened the way for eminent Muslim philosophers and thinkers such as Al-Farabi, Abu Bakr al-Razi, Ibn Sina, al-Ghazali, Ibn Bajah, Ibn Tufail and Ibn Rushd to emerge and formulate a more comprehensive Islamic philosophical discourse. According to the renowned biographer Ibn al-Nadim, al-Kindi authored exactly 242 books and treaties on all the sciences of his day, but according to other researchers he wrote as many as 280 works. Either way, the vast majority of al-Kindi's books are no longer in existence. Nevertheless, the historians are agreed that he was a truly great philosopher, encyclopedist and a prolific writer. His achievements were so wide-ranging that influential European thinkers such as Roger Bacon considered him to be one of the world's greatest minds. After a number of his books were translated into Latin, al Gindi became popular in the West as a philosopher and optician. While in the Muslim world he became known as the father of Islamic philosophy. As an ardent champion of philosophy and scientific thought, Al-Kindi suffered persecution at the hands of the traditionally minded Khalif al-Muttawakkil al-Allah, 
who, after ascending the Abbasid throne, drove out the philosophical rationalists from the caliphal court of Baghdad. Ironically, al-Gindi survived his tormentors by more than a decade and died at the age of 72.